Welcome back to DAPRA's milling training video series, where we introduce important concepts for milling that will help you achieve the best performance from your cutting tools. In today's video, we'll cover the various milling tool types and address some of their strengths and weaknesses. When deciding on what type of milling tool to use for an application, it's important to know what the characteristics, strengths, and weaknesses are for each tool type. Then you can choose a tool that best fits the needs of the part being machined, as well as the machine tool being used. Let's take a look at the most commonly used milling tool types. Shoulder mills are the industry staple for milling. If a shop is doing any milling at all, odds are they've got some, if not multiple styles of shoulder mills in the building. Now, shoulder mills generate a 90 degree square edge and are usable for most types of milling other than 3D contouring. Shoulder mills provide consistent chip thickness and can be run at low to moderate feed rates and from light to heavy depths of cut. They typically come in a variety of corner radii to fulfill most part requirements. They're suitable for all machine types and can leave a fine finish when needed. Shoulder milling inserts generally provide between two to six usable cutting edges depending on the insert design. More usable edges generally mean somewhat less versatility in use. Button or copy mills are excellent for roughing and semi-finishing, especially on 3D surfaces. Until the invention of high feed cutters, copy mills were the go-to for roughing in most mold and die shops. Copy mills are strong and well suited to abusive cuts on both old and new machine tools. Now older machines can utilize copy mills at heavy depths of cut and slow to moderate feed rates but newer machine tools utilize copy mills at light depths of cut and much quicker feed rates, at times rivaling that of high feed. The round shape of a button insert makes it useful for semi-finishing operations and helps provide many usable edges per insert. Copy mills will leave a scalloped finish on your workpiece. Lead angle face mills are generally used for open face milling where a flat workpiece surface requires machining to a desired height or surface finish. Now these cutters usually operate at a 45 degree cutting angle, but are also available in 75 degrees, 60 degrees, and more. This type of cutter provides consistent chip thickness and is capable of light to heavy depths of cut and low to moderate feed rates. They're suitable to all machine tool types and provide many usable edges, making them very economical. However, their shape often makes them less suitable when face milling against a wall or a protrusion as their geometry leaves excess stock on any inside corner. High feed cutters are relatively new to manufacturing compared to the other tools mentioned, but have increased in popularity in the past several years, often replacing copy mills as a primary roughing tool for mold and die applications. Not just for mold and die, however, High feed has also found a place in job shops where significant roughing might be required. High feed cutters create a very thin chip requiring much higher feed rates than normal. As such, they're best suited to newer machines capable of fast feed rates while still maintaining part accuracy. High feed cutters are operated at a light to medium depth of cut and do yield a scalloped wall finish. They create primarily axial cutting forces or into the spindle, making them an excellent choice for long reach applications. DAPRA introduced the indexable finishing ball nose concept to the US market back in 1989. Now as the pioneer of this concept, DAPRA offers an industry leading selection of ball nose, backdraft, and even high feed insert shapes to fit the same cutter body. Ball nose cutters are well suited to 3D semi-finishing and finishing cuts where part size and surface finish are important. Accuracy is often critical with this tool type as 3D surfaces are generated using multiple passes with the ball. The larger the tool, the smaller the scallop, allowing larger step overs for fine finishing. Ball nose inserts are inherently strong due to the round insert shape making them a safer option for unattended cutting. Bull nose or backdraft style tools provide another excellent finishing tool choice, especially for straight or tapered walls. Now accuracy is again paramount here, 
as the corner radius and wiping action of the tool is depended on for tight part tolerances and fine surface finishing. Backdraft tools minimize surface contact, reducing deflection, and helping assure accuracy in both semi-finishing and finishing applications. Bull nose or backdraft tooling can be utilized in multiple directions, allowing both profile and plunge finishing techniques to be used. Knowing the strengths and weaknesses of the various available cutting tools will help you make a good choice for your milling application, considering both the part to be machined and the machine tool to be used. Now our next video will focus on how to choose good speed and feed ranges from your cutting tool catalog for programming your milling tool.